She would tell you that a unit, a uh, center, was for many years part of the ICS department. It was really seen as a, as a service department. And then we, when we started to engage your teaching and learning at uh, UWC when I joined in 2008, uh, we made one decision which I believe in many ways was historic for the higher education sector in South Africa. But I think we'll have many positive, continuous benefits for UWC. And at executive management level, we decided that teaching and learning as an endeavor at the university will be placed right alongside research, not at the back. Because historically, if you look at certain institutions and you look for staff when they apply for promotions, all the panel sees is how many papers have been published and how many masters and PhD students you've supervised. I mean, you could be failing 90% of your students in the classroom, that doesn't matter. You got promoted to professor, etc. So we've turned that around. We've turned that around to the point where we now we are moving in the direction where when one is uh, preparing one's material for promotion, apart from the wonderful research that you do, you accompany it with a teaching and learning portfolio. But we're taking it further, and it's something that I experienced at the University of Witwatersrand when I was Dean of Science there for two years before Brian O'Connell convinced me to join UWC, was that we're moving in the direction of a, a software where we'll enable our students to do an online assessment of the lectures. And that assessment report becomes part of your portfolio. Why is that important? It's important because I chaired a promotions committee at WITS, and we had two outstanding researchers who by the National Research Foundation were rated to be excellent researchers. But the reports from the peers, and WITS had a nice system in faculty of science where we had a science teaching and learning committee that actually went into the different lectures and did assessments. But the report from the peers and the students indicated lots of room for improvement. <laughs> And these two st staff members were not promoted. But we had put them on a developmental trajectory of the, the following year, working with the Science Teaching and Learning Center of the faculty. And a year later, they came back, applied for promotion. The research was great. The teaching reports, the assessment by the students and the peers was very positive, And those individuals <coughs> were promoted. It is my dream that when I give you WC at the end of next year, a similar kind of process will be in place. So we assess an academic equally for your research, postgraduate education, as well as for your teaching and learning ability. And I'm going to thank each one of you here, to be part, not only as participants, but willing to be part of the program. Under Juliet's uh, leadership, we have big plans for the unit. We moved it out of ICS reporting directly to the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic because we see it as part of the academic enterprise. We have one of the finest teaching and learning uh, strategic plans. I met uh, just uh, about three weeks ago with Professor Bozelek to look at the planned activities for 2014 in terms of the strategic plan all, and already beginning to ring fence the funding for these teaching and learning initiatives so there will be no need for the formal money. So we are on a huge drive. And I want to show you that if you couple that to our staff development and PhD project, which we started in uh, 2009, where we buy back teaching time of our staff who are doing PhD studies at different level, been very successful. We just did the roll call for the 20, uh, September graduation, which is taking place in two weeks' time. And since we started the program in 2008, by the end of September, 38 of our staff members would have received a PhD through that program. And we are going to meeting soon with the new court for 2014. I meet with the court twice a year.
to look at what funding requirements are required and, they, and about six months later we look at progress and look at what the challenges are. So it is very exciting. I think um, I was sitting there, somebody who's, uh, who turned 65 in March this year <laughs> and listened to your discussion about old age and the last comment was very relevant that there is no limit to contributing to new knowledge and also to learning stuff. If you look at, if you look at the awards of the Nobel laureates in the sciences and the medical fields, quite often the people who receive them, receive them for work done after the age of 60. Yeah. So it's never too late to do research, it's never too late to take on masters and PhD students. Uh, you got to lead from the front. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning you is the following. This is a, I just collected this from the library today. This is the bound thesis of my master's student, Mr. Lee Fong Buri. He's going to be graduating two weeks time with a distinction for his master's. So it's, it's never too late uh, to study. It's never too late. Neither is it too late to contribute to new knowledge. So I'm excited about uh, you guys' presence here, your contribution, I want to assure you through the Senate Teaching and Learning Committee and the Faculty Teaching and Learning uh, Specialists and the Deputy Dean for Teaching and Learning, we shall ensure that uh, our support for teaching and learning at our university will continue to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you.